Hi, I'm Eric Antoinette. And I am Brandy Safran, and we're the hosts of Mastering Relationship Sacredness. And we have a special guest with us today, Tao Chai. Tao Chai is a former psychotherapist turned intuitive business coach and founder of the Soul Movement Method. She helps visionary entrepreneurs and transformational facilitators manifest a thriving lifestyle and business by harnessing the Soul Movement Method a somatic-based methodology designed to reveal hidden blocks, clear ancestral entanglements, and access the root cause that holds us back from thriving in our relationships, business, and life. She's also the author of the Intuition Heart Cards and Guidebook, an interactive tool designed for reflection and guidance with self and others. Tao certifies coaches, therapists, and holistic practitioners in the soul movement method and the intuition heart cards, helping them add powerful tools to accentuate and expand their own practice. Welcome, Tao. Hello, Brandy and Eric. So wonderful to be with you. It's wonderful to have you. And we just wanted to uh, express uh, one of the reasons why we're so happy to have you here is that we really value uh, intuition in, in our relationship. Brandy has an extremely strong intuition. I, I like to think that I have one too, not quite as strong as hers. And we know that you do also. So, and we know that you're, you're here to present uh, a wonderful gift for us, your intuition through your heart cards. So could you begin maybe by telling us a little bit more about what your heart cards are? Sure, sure. So let's see, the Intuition Heart Cards were created in 1999. So they've been around for quite a while. And they came about when I was doing a master's thesis in spiritual psychology. And I was very much exploring the whole concept of relationship and how relationship with self is reflected in relationship with others and in relationship with source. And the reason I was so curious about this is because I had a very painful breakup from my boyfriend with whom I'd come to live in Los Angeles. And, um, and I used this as an opportunity to really deepen into a year long process while doing my master's thesis. And while I was percolating in that process, one day I went to sleep and in that state between wake and sleep, I just suddenly had a vision of all these dancing hearts in all these myriad of formations and something prompted me to get out of bed and quickly jot them down. And the next day I woke up and I sketched them and I created 21 heart cards. And then after a few days, I just jotted down, intuitively downloaded about 94 words. And I printed them and I had them laminated. And I was basically using them as prompts for my own um, process and inquiry about relationship and was finding them very, very helpful. And then I reached a point in my year-long thesis where I decided to interview healthy couples or healthy partnership. And I created all these really formal questions to ask these couples. But I had these cards that I was working with and they were in my bag. And I remember visiting one of the first couples and started asking them the, you know, the questions I had. And it was coming out kind of rigid. I was feeling rigid. So I was intuitively prompted to take the cards that were handmade at the time out of my bag and simply ask the couples to pick a card and pick a word and explore what kind of associations came up for them, sensations, feelings, thoughts, as they looked at the cards. And then if one partner would pick a card and talk about you know, what came up for them, the partner would then talk about the same card and it really opened a very, very profound space 
I mean, I've been working with them and working with cards in general for many years now. But at the time, it was quite a revelation to see what a profound space these imagery and the combination of imagery with words opened up in reflection, specifically in partnership, but in partnership with self as well, seen as, you know, they are reflections of each other. So that is how they came about. And then they became a product. I remember when they became a product, I was very, very hesitant to have these childlike images presented. But at that point, many of my friends are psychotherapists and coaches, and they had asked me to use these handmade laminated cards with their clients at that point. I remember sitting for hours, I was so passionate about this, for hours, cutting out the words and cutting out the cards and giving them as gifts. And, and then these coaches and psychotherapists started asking me to make more cards so they can hand them out to clients. And they very organically became a product that I then started selling. And they come with a guidebook, which came much later. Again, because people asked me, can you show us how to use the cards, which was very organic and intuitive for me. I didn't think I needed a guidebook. But so that came later as well. So that's the brief version of how they came about. Mm, beautiful. I love that. Thank you, Tal. Love that. Um, so are you willing to guide us through a little bit of a, maybe a demonstration and how these cards work? Of course. Yeah, yeah we're, we're open. We're completely open. Yay. Yay. Because <laughs> <laughs> Dive in. They're interactive and experiential, and that's what I love doing. So, of course, there's the handmade versions of, of the card, but I also have an online version. So I wonder if I can share my screen with you and the audience. I think it will be easier for us to see the imagery on the screen and follow along together. Fantastic. And also just to remind the audience that we sent out um, in the email, the downloaded documents, so you guys can follow along with us. And I'm also going to drop the link right now in the chat box in case you didn't see that email and just download it so you can follow along with us. It's going to help you. And if they'd like to print it, then there are prompts and spaces to write their epiphanies and so on. So that could be helpful too. Fantastic. Okay, so let me see if I can share my screen. Can you see the screen? Yes, it's up. It's up. Okay, good. So, so this, is, this is the online reading room for the Intuition Heart Cards, which I will be sharing, by the way, for a limited time with our audience if they want to download the, or receive rather, the free gift. Fantastic. Thank you. You're offering for your audience. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah. So we're going to, again, use the cards and the imagery on the cards to activate an inquiry about your relationship and about your relationship with self within the relationship. And so I just want to say a few words before we begin is that there is no right or wrong way of using the cards. There's never a right or wrong answer. They're really a tool to open up an inquiry and open up a sacred space, which means a compassionate and heart-centered space for us to dive into whatever energetic pattern wants to be revealed, seen within our own consciousness. And it's always in service to our greatest level of upliftment, mastery, evolution, always. And so I do want to premise that sometimes there are words that can trigger a little bit of a negative reaction within us. And just to understand that that's an opportunity for us to look at an inner part that maybe not, not be so comfortable in service to airing it out and giving it space so that it can be released and, and, and replaced with more spaciousness within our consciousness. So, so to never be afraid, it's usually just the ego that contracts. If in the event that something kind of triggers a not such a comfortable feeling within us. So just premising that, I want to say something about imagery and that imagery, I had a professor once who said to me that imagery are meds for the soul. Mm -hmm. because they are pre-verbal, 
they are archetypal. In other words, they are larger than just our personal. They can be both personal and collective. In other words, they can evoke an essence or a quality that is universal, that is part of the entire spectrum of our human experience. They're also multidimensional because they can meet us at a place at different levels of our development, whether it's our personal human development during this time and space in this lifetime, birth, pre-birth, or again, archetypal. You know, you don't have to believe in past lives, but when, you know, I come from a soul-centered soul perspective, so I do hold the perspective that our soul um, lives within a continuum that is much larger than just our, this specific time and space. And so I'll just offer that to, to our clients, but there is absolutely no clients, I mean audience, but there is absolutely no requirement to believe anything. In fact, I always tell my clients and my, my students to not believe a word I say and that our intuition is always our highest authority. And that when we're working together, whether I'm holding space for you, which we're going to do right now, it really is about holding a compassionate container for just the sacred to come through and support the deepest level of loving and revelation that is available for us today. Love it. We're excited. Yay, I'm excited. And so there are a few options we can lean into. One option is I have prepared a few questions that were present for me that might support you in exploring, but you may want to already come with a specific inquiry that is present for you, which feels more aligned, Eric and Brandy. Wait, do we have an inquiry? I have a bit of an inquiry. Okay, so we'll lean into that. Yeah, I do. So, so let me just... I always say let's slow down to the pace of wisdom. Before we even start, we really want to open the container or set the space with an intention. And so my intention would be to be 100% present with you and to get out of the way. In other words, let my ego out of the way so that I can completely support, facilitate, and allow whatever is present and available to be seen, heard, expressed, released in service to your sacred partnership. Mm. And so what is your intention? Uh, for me, my intention is to be open to guidance, to receive the message um, fully, um, to get out of my own way to open it up to more more soul expansion between me and soul and my soul meeting eric's soul beautiful so my intention would be to clear any blocks that are in my way um that are in the way of me being in my highest self and me being the most loving being i can be to myself and to Brandy and to others. And so it is. And so it is. And so, it is. and so with that said, just tune in and see if your inquiry is for you, Brandy, or for the relational field. Because I always say there, there's you, there's Eric, there's two partners, and then there's always a third entity, which is the relational field, or a third field rather. And so just tune in and see what the inquiry is for. It's for their relational field. Okay. So another prompt is to open, to ask a an open-ended question. In other words, we don't want to be asking or inquiring with, um, with, you know, opening an inquiry that has a yes, no answer. And you want to be as specific as possible. And the only reason for that is so that guidance can come through in a way that is clear and it has meaning for you. It's more focused. 
Yeah. Should I ask a question? Absolutely. So, um, my question is how could we work more in unison um, with the um, with energetic fields period when mine often is out of body I sometimes I, I i feel my vibration is extremely high and therefore it could be almost a distracting energy and then eric's energy is the opposite really really low so mm -hmm. from like just a energetic relational experience you know these two energies one's really high vibrating like this and then the other one's really solid and low and then how can we bring more balance into that plane of meeting each other in the center? Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing you say is that the inquiry is about how to connect or what is the quality? Just see if anything in what I say resonates or what is the quality um, that is wanting to be expressed, revealed, or what is the quality or essence needed for you and Eric to connect? Does that ground for you at all? In terms of honing it a little bit more? Yes. yes. What is the quality that Eric and I need to um, practice being or inviting into to meet and connect um, okay. at, a, at, a, yeah, at a more integrated, sacred place? Okay, and so with that question, see if there's a reading or a layout that calls to you most. So there are four layouts in the specific online room. I like the really specific one, the one card, one word. Okay, I'm going to open that up. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scan like this you can see the cards and let me know when to stop and i'm going to scan the words and let me know when to stop stop okay so the first question i'd have is just look at the look at the card and the word because they reflect on each other and notice if there are any association feelings sensations that come to you nothing has to make sense necessarily should i express like the first sure yeah, yeah. so i think that the first one i mean i guess it feels like a cloud to me the great things they feel like a cloud and um so the the one that's catching my eye is the top one how that energetic it's coming down and into the physicality of the heart. So it's not only vibrating above, but within the heart space as well. Mm -hmm. And that heart is being held, right, by this universal uh, energetic field. Mm -hmm. I'm also looking at the tip of the heart at the bottom, which is actually mm -hmm. not being connected by anything. So there's a little space there of the grounding. Mm -hmm. And when I always think downwards, I think of Eric because he's very rooted, very earthy. Um, yeah, that's what I'm feeling. And when you see the word touching with that, how does that land for you? Or what does that open up within you? Yeah, I think we're both very physical people since we're both yogis. And um, I think for, for me, touching brings me back into the physical and makes me also connect with eric like it brings us closer together when we're physical we practice hugging and long hugs and um how that is definitely a connecting field for us in a relationship so are you willing to repeat that because you just said some really important words yeah, yeah so I'll try. <laughs> um, so that for for Eric and I, we we practice physical hugging as a way of deep connection and rooting into each other. Um, 
So it's definitely one of our practices of sacredness is, is touch and touching and hugging and physicality with that word. Beautiful. Beautiful. Does that answer some of your inquiry as of now? There are ways of deepening into this, but for now, is there a level of... Oh, yes. Clarity, yes. Clarification? Definitely. More hugging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I can definitely resonate with, with what... Uh, with with that card, but it's particularly the touching part because it really, um, it really is a way of connecting energies and balancing energies. The the, the high energy that Randy's talking about versus the grounding energy that I have. I feel like there's a there's a mix that happens when we're connected physically, and uh, and there's mm -hmm. a balancing that happens. Beautiful. Are you open to my sharing any intuitive hits that are coming up for me? Sure. And I always remind you that it's, it's my intuition and just always see what lands and what doesn't. So I just noticing that there are three clouds and we spoke about the fields of Randy's field, Eric's field and the relational field. So I'm just, I just became aware of it and I've used these cards for many, many years. I've never had that realization. I'm also aware of the movement in the cards so clouds are moving and they're they're malleable they can transform so i'm just noticing movement and i'm wondering if you connected with the movement well what i'm noticing is there's one heart as well so it's emerging of the bodies yes. and then and that there is um And, you know, a support all around the structure. I, I am curious about, you know, I keep looking at that empty space at the bottom. Um, I'm just curious about it, of like, you know, the support, you know, as yogis, we're always rooting and rooting and rooting and grounding. So I'm like, okay, there's a float. And I'm curious almost about the empty space. Are you open to another process to explore the empty space? Yes. Okay, so another way of working with the cards is to actually lend your voice to the part that you're curious about. So if you're curious about the empty space, you want to lend your vocal cords. And when I say lend your vocal cords, if I asked cords, if I asked you, what is your name? What would you say? Brandy. You don't have to think that through, right? Right. And so when we do this process, I am going to speak directly to the empty space, which is going to speak through you, through your vocal cords. So in other words, you don't want to censor anything that comes through. You just want to let whatever comes through, come through, even if it sounds like gibberish. Does that make sense? And so we're going to have play with this and have fun. And we don't have to work with this through our logical mind. Okay. I'm open. And so are you okay with my, uh, my speaking to empty space? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to say empty space that has come up in Brandy's inquiry today. Why did you show up for Brandy at this time? And so you want to say, I am empty space that came up in Brandy's imagery or card today. And I have come into your field, Brandy, and just allow that to continue. Okay. I am empty space that came into your cards today. And the reason that I am coming into this space is to allow for more freedom of non-structured time and time of play and openness and possibilities. And what might that look like for you in the days or weeks to come, Brandy, or empty space? Um, to trust in the unfoldment of of letting it be and letting the possibilities being open to um, the message of an empty space when it comes into my day. 
Thank you, Brandy. Are you okay with my asking empty space one more thing? Yes. What is the gift you bring for Brandy and Eric? What is the gift you bring to their relational field? I empty space bring. I empty space bring the gift of play into the relational 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 field of Brandy and Eric. And so Brandy, when you hear that, what might you be able to do in the weeks or days to come to support that play, become a part of your relational field? I think we're going to, um, and I'm still connected to the touch and that. So I think that we're going to continue our hugs. And we had a lot of fun playing. We danced together. We put on music. And uh, we, I'm, we glad, I'm so glad she said dance because um, when, when you, you mentioned the movement, Tal, I thought that, that dance was another way that kind of brought us together, that brought the, the high energy and the grounded energy together when we're dancing. And we just dance for fun and playfulness. So it really, really resonates with me what, uh, what you said and what Brandy's saying right now. Beautiful. Thank you, Empty Space. And thank you, Brandy, for being willing to intuit an open space for Empty Space mm -hmm. to literally and figuratively speak and move through you. Mm. Love it. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. so beautiful. And so I'm just going to check in with Eric, even though this was your inquiry for the relational field, if there's anything else that wants to be expressed or revealed through you, Eric, relative to this specific combination. The only thing I could mention, Tal, right now is, is gratitude. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the heart for me is also about mm -hmm. gratitude. And um, one of our practices before we go to bed each night is to practice gratitude. And I think that's also another way that helps to connect us and bring us closer together uh, and bring our energies together. So I would say gratitude for this whole process. Um, gratitude to you for bringing it to us and sharing it with us as well yeah, and gratitude to your relational field mm. that is wanting to play and have empty space and all that juicy Absolutely. yummy stuff yeah. yeah thank you for being willing to just open yourself up to your relational field and to this process mm. and so we can see how even a simple process can open us up to just activating a whole um, you know, plethora, myriad of information, wisdom that wants to bubble through us and for us. Yeah. And so I'm wondering if Eric, if you want to inquire uh, or. Yeah, I think, uh, mm -hmm. I think maybe one card also, and, um, okay. and then we'll have, yeah, or, or maybe we should shift, I think, and go, because I want to leave time for the audience also to, uh, to mm -hmm. go through the process. And I know you have, um, you, you want to take them through that as well. So maybe for time reasons, I think uh, we'll skip over because I think we, we already benefited uh, quite a bit from this. And um, I think maybe it's time for the audience to benefit as well. Sure. So let's um, move on to the exercise for the audience. And for that, I'm just reminding them to download and print, if possible, the worksheet provided. Yes, I'm going to drop it again in the chat now, everyone. So you, if, remember, if you're just coming in, go to the chat and the link for the download to print is there now. And so for this, just like we have a relational field, we are also all part of the same collective field. And so we're going to harness this collective field to support the audience in receiving exactly what it is that each person viewing needs. And so a reminder that each card, each image will activate whoever is watching in a way that is needed and necessary and meaningful for them. Okay. Yes. And, and of course, if they want to dive deeper and experiment 
specifically for themselves, then they can download the, the gift and play with these online tools. So let's go to, let's use one image. I'm going to again scan the cards and then Brandy or Eric, let me know when to stop and that will be the card for the audience. Stop. Wow. Okay. So what I have here, I'm going to take the audience through a process that I call a self-counseling process. In other words, you're using the cards to reflect or to activate a process of self-inquiry, of really getting to know aspects of yourself that are maybe more hidden or not necessarily, um, necessarily so available for you just from a surface level or if you're trying to access this from the head. Okay. And so the question, oh, another, another part of this exercise is I'm going to ask the audience, you need a pen for this. And I'm going to ask the audience to use your non-dominant hand to write whatever associations, feelings, thoughts come through you. Okay. So just like Brandy, we allowed your voice to be a mouthpiece for the part. We're going to ask the audience to use their non-dominant hand to be the mouthpiece. Okay. And so before we begin, as we always do, and we probably should have done this before we picked a card, but <laughs> is to just set an intention for each person to set an intention for what they would like to receive through this process. And what is their inquiry? One inquiry may be, what is the essence that will positively transform my relationship with self right now? Or my relationship with a partner right now? Or my relationship with source right now? I'm wondering if we should do another reading because we did it out of, sure, um, yeah, out of sync with question. how I usually do it. No problem. Okay. That. So that's the question. What is the essence that will posit positively transform or shift my relationship with self, source, or partner right now? And I'm going to ask for the person in the audience to think of a partner or if they want to do it with themselves to just be very specific, as specific as possible, because that will allow them to receive the deepest level of clarity and meaning through this process. And once they've done that, let's, let's do the reading for them. Let me go back. Stop. Very different card. <laughs> when we set an intention, very different energetic. And so what I'm going to do now is use your non-dominant hand, take your pen in your non-dominant hand, and you want to allow this image, when you reflect on this image, take a few minutes to simply write, uncensored, free-flowing, whatever comes through you, what associations, sensations, maybe images, stories, memories come up for you when you look at this card. And you may want to do this with the audience, Brandy and Eric. I'm doing it. I'm reading my handwriting. Non-dominant <laughs> okay. non -dominant yeah. and. Yeah, I did it. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. The second prompt, and probably want to give yourself a little bit more time, but the second prompt is, is there part of the image that captures your attention most? In other words, it could be the heart, it could be the small heart, it could be the black, it could be the white, it could be the empty space, it could be anything on this image. 
And if that image could talk, what would it say to you right now? And so a prompt would be, I am, for example, the yin or the white space in the yin on the imagery in this card. And I came into your field, John, Jane, Maggie, to let you know or to share with you and just allow your non-dominant hand to free flow right, whatever comes to mind. And when we're done with that image, you want to move on to the next part of the imagery that possibly speaks to you. Again, it could be the red in the heart, it could be the whole heart, it could be the space. And allow that part of the image, again, to let you know why it came into your space today. into your field. Perhaps it has a gift to share with you or bestow upon you. Perhaps it has a blessing to bestow upon you. You really want to slow down to the pace of your intuition. Again, there's no right or wrong way of doing this. And so in essence, you can continue connecting with different parts of the imagery and you can deepen and deepen and deepen and deepen your inquiry. You can go as deep as you like. Another part of this process, if you like, is to actually take the different parts. In other words, perhaps the black in the yang came forth and the empty space. And then you can have the black and the empty space speak to each other. And you do this through your non-dominant hand. So you would say the empty space could perhaps with the non-dominant hand ask a question. Mm -hmm. Empty space, I would like to get to know you more. Why are you here? Or who are you? Or why did you come into my space today? And then let empty space just intuitively answer even if it feels like gibberish, okay? So you just intuitively, and so what you're doing is, is you're creating a heart-centered space. You're kind of creating spaciousness for different parts of your psyche to be activated through this imagery and to speak to each other. Because relationship is never about agreeing. It's about connecting in the face of disagreement, in the face of whatever is coming up for those inner aspects within ourself and how those inner aspects are always reflected in relationship with a partner and our relationship with source. And so another way of deepening this process is to even ask empty space, how might you be reflected in my relationship with Eric or with Brandy, or with Maggie or with John? Or how might the relationship between the two aspects speaking be a reflection of some part of the relationship about which my inquiry was about, a parent, a child, a colleague at work? So I call this a self-counseling session. We really are rushing through this in service to our audience today but this could be our long processes and so you want to set a container and say I'm going to give myself 30 minutes or an hour to do this either with myself or with a partner once you have written allowed kind of the free flow of this process to just express you might want to then revisit it and 
scan the process and see if there are any pearls of wisdom, words that stand out or sentences that are familiar because you're doing this from a right brain place of intuitive flow. You can then visit it with a more, with more of a left brain, right? The more grounded part of ourself, which again can be reflected in relationship, right? Eric and Brandy and bring the left part of ourselves to scan and see, well, if, is there anything I can practically use in my life? So again, we can go on and on, and there are many more processes, and I'm going to share a few more of these processes with your audience if, they, if this resonates with them and they want to register for the free gift. So I'm happy to do that just in service to time. Beautiful, thank you so much. And well, it certainly resonates with us and has resonated with us, Tal, and this is a, a beautiful gift that you um, have created and offered uh, to the world. So we want to thank you for that. Um, thank you, yeah, us. and also, should we close the cards for now, Tal, and then we could just go sure. side by side. And I also wanted to, go. again, I'm going to drop in one more time in the chat box, Tal's gift. Um, I'm also going to send an email. Um, but before we close for today, I did want to ask Tal one more question, if that's okay. Absolutely. So what is, or how do you describe or resonate for your intuition about the meaning of the sacred relationship? For me, sacred relationship is about being intentional. Yeah. Where that sacred relationship with inner parts of myself, where that sacred relationship with my higher self or the divine, with a sacred relationship with a partner. It's about setting an intentional space. Mm. And there are many ways to set the space, right? We can do it through ritual. We can just do it through intention. Um, we can work with tools such as the intuition heart cards, or there are so many tools on the market today to work with. Really, the tools are an activator. They're an anchor. They're a placeholder for a much larger field to come through us and for us and reveal itself to us. And that can only happen when we cre you know, create a spaciousness mm. um, through ritual, through intention, through opening our heart, by intentionally holding ourselves and our partner and, and our process with compassion and with loving mm. and, and non-judgment you know, radical non-judgment. Beautiful. And, I mean, yeah. I'm going to write it down. I think that I'm going to write down everybody's definition. It's so rich. Um, mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I felt that this is a ritual. You know, the heart card intuitions, they are ritualistic. And that is just so beautiful to set time and intention to devote to your relationship by doing this. Thank you for offering this practice and this gift to us. Mm -hmm. Yes, my pleasure. Thank you kindly. So if you, the audience, would like to deepen your exploration of relationship with self and others, you can go to talshai.com or Google her at Soul Movement Method. Mm. Tal, thank you so much for being uh, with us today and sharing this beautiful gift that you have. Thank you kindly. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's been an absolute pleasure sharing space and playing with you today. It's been our pleasure. Thank you.